Now to introduce a man that was um, key to inspiring uh, the journey to zero waste. Uh, Dave Bunting, MBE, is an Everest expedition leader, an ex-British forces mountaineer no less, uh, and in 2006 led a British army, uh, set of British army climbers to be the first Brits up the West Ridge, the infamous uh, West Ridge. Um, so over to you, Dave. Wow, what a venue. I'm hoping to kit out my cellar like this in the future. Thank you very much for inviting me along today. It's a real privilege to be here. Uh, I'm a member of staff at Leeds Beckett University, and I'm a high altitude mountaineer and expedition leader. That's my passion. And I've been lucky enough to go all over the world mountaineering. And my real uh, love and my second home is for the Himalaya. Uh, and we've seen it on telly a lot at the moment and uh, in some quite sad images on the TV. But what a wonderful place it is. And the people out there are incredible people to get to know and work on expeditions with. So, why am I stood up here? I was fortunate enough to be involved in the very early stages of, of the project, when five years ago, Tony, along with some of his team, came out to a center that I worked at in the Alps. And I uh, introduced and told the team a story that I'd been involved in. And that was to put uh, a Brit uh, on the summit of Everest via the West Ridge, which had never been climbed by a British team before. And that photograph you're looking at there is somebody poised to go for the summit at 8,000 meters above sea level. Same person in that picture, in that picture, and in that picture. And bringing the team out there uh, from Unilever out to uh, Bavaria was an incredible experience. And I told them about what we'd done. And in 2006, we headed out to the Himalaya. We had uh, three years worth of preparation and planning for the expedition. There were 49 team members across three teams climbing on three different mountains. But obviously, I'm talking about the West Ridge of Everest at the moment. The other two teams were on separate mountains. But over what was a three-month expedition in total, but eight weeks climbing on the mountain initially, we progressed up onto the West Ridge. We were the first team to step onto this route for 17 years. So there was nobody else at all on this route. And although most of the time a very positive experience, like any other big project, there were setbacks. This is one of the team members in the first two weeks of the expedition falling down a crevasse. And that could have been a death in the first two weeks of our expedition. What always makes me chuckle about this photograph is I would have thought it more important to take the photograph than rescue him out of the crevasse. <laughs> we faced a lot of bad weather. And when you're at such high altitude, that can be extremely difficult to deal with as well. But I think one thing that's very different about our team and why our team were capable of going on a route like this is every single individual knew how to look after themselves. They knew when to turn back, they knew about their limits, and they knew how to perform as part of a big team, because this was a really big team effort. There was some sadness, though, and a team that we partnered up with, with two extreme skiers, uh, that came into the valley that we were working on. One of the skiers was killed uh, when he attempted to ski the north face of Everest and fell the distance of the face to his death. And that was a low point in the expedition for us. But like any project, you've got to pick yourself up, and that's what we did. And I know Thomas would have wanted us to continue up the West Ridge. I'll tell you a little bit about the West Ridge of Everest. We were the first, as I said, to step onto the route for 17 years. There are over 6,000 people now that have summited Everest. But via the West Ridge, or any variation of the West Ridge, only 19 people have summited, Ev summited Everest, and only 16 of those got back down again alive. By the actual route that we were climbing, only two people have ever climbed it, a man and a woman from Canada. And it really is a very different route, where you need to work as a team throughout. The challenges are, are much greater during the climbing, there were no ropes ahead of us, no Sherpas ahead of us, no sure route of where we're going. And throughout the whole of the climb, it was exploration and going into the unknown. But it was an incredible experience for us all. As we got to 7,000 meters initially at our camp three, and at this stage, we're shuttling up and down the mountain all of our equipment. When you do these big expeditions, you don't climb the mountain once. You're climbing up and down, shuttling a lot of equipment. And it's not a lightweight trip, this. We had 13 tons of equipment with us at base camp. 
you have to have some luxuries with you at base camp when you're on a big expedition for three months. And during the climb, to safeguard the shuttling up and down the mountain, we laid in place five miles worth of rope. So it's a very, very different experience to get us into place over eight weeks of climbing to be poised to go for the summit. And we had two summit teams in place to set out, and that's the first summit team in that photograph that got into the site of Camp 5 at 8,000 meters and about to go for the summit of Everest. And that photograph shows two Sherpas, and these people are superhuman. They are incredible, incredible people. In that photograph there, on the left-hand side, already two times every summit here. On the right-hand side, five times every summit here. And look how fresh those guys look. They look fresher than most of you sat in this room at this moment. <laughs> Eight weeks of climbing on Everest. The team members from our team in the tent next door weren't looking quite so fresh <laughs> at that stage of the expedition, but everybody was performing extremely well and poised to go for the summit. But expeditions are challenging, and that's why I like being involved in them. Big projects are challenging. And on this expedition, when the guys set out in the early hours of the morning, at 8,200 meters, they experienced severe avalanche conditions, which I was unwilling to let them proceed in, because no mountain is worth a life. And so when they turned back in the night due to the avalanche conditions, we regathered down at base camp and made the decision to call off the expedition. But I look back on this expedition with so many positive memories, because it was an incredibly successful project. I look back at that team as being the most fantastic team I've ever been involved with. And I don't think I'll ever go on an expedition like that again with such a, a fantastic group of people. But why am I telling you this story? Because there are so many parallels with this project. A mindset to go into a project and leave no stone unturned meticulous planning to deal with the unknown. Total and utter commitment to the task. And finally, a passion to succeed in something groundbreaking. I'd like to just finish with a quote that I use a lot when I do presentations, but I think it's incredibly fitting with this project. And it gives me great privilege to have been involved with this. And when Tony rung me a couple of months ago to tell me about the success of the project, it really filled me with a huge amount of pleasure to having been involved. Thanks very much. <laughs>